The entire goal of this video is to discuss ideas about helping airsoft fields grow by sharing some ideas I have to change airsoft as it's looked at today. This stems from me thinking about the financial side of the sport and how it can cater to more than just the typical crowd that it serves today. So what factor brings in the largest majority of people who play airsoft? Here's my scientific analysis on what I think are the biggest factors of the current airsoft state. So Milsim I think brings in the most followed by airsoft YouTube farmers, you know, just trying to get clips of people being mad or whatever. Then obviously kids, I mean, they want to play airsoft because they think it's cool. I played no, no eye pro airsoft when in the woods when I was like 12. And in my personal view, I just don't think people are joining to play speed QB specifically. It's not hate, it's kind of just what I think. And then obviously the lesser side. I talked about is the the role player side a lot of people do medieval or fantasy larp on massive scales it only makes sense that they do it with airsoft guns so keeping this all in mind first let's make competitive milsim People love to compete whether it's just for fun or to get bragging rights or to most importantly test themselves. Picture you and the lads create the dumbest edgiest name with several other teams to actually compete. Your team as a whole could consist of 6 to 12 players. Of course you could have your designated riflemen and marksmen and all the same concepts of a real big wig milsim but just add a competitive edge to it all. You spend all your thousands of dollars on gear and time training. Let's actually apply it to an area where you can earn glory or even a cash prize or whatever it there's so much potential and surely a lot of issues that would have to be addressed imagine saying that you're the East Coast's best ranked milsim team to recap for all those who ADHD blanked out ranked milsim games have real leaderboards real bragging rights put real testing to your tactical larping abilities picture the roadie boys diamond one versus Greyhound squad ranked bronze five and I know some Milsim people will say, Um, dude, I don't want to be competitive. I'd rather slow walk through the woods, man. That's the real military experience. And that's completely understandable. Not everyone wants to strive to be the best. I'm completely kidding, of course. I would tap out after a day, like, doing a Milsim West thing. I, I don't know. Okay, my next point is, why are fields not doing educational seminars hosted by qualified individuals who can teach real tactics? Some of you may not know, well all of you don't know, but I am somewhat of a businessman myself. And here is an industry secret that I learned at Business Con last year. You can make a bungo amount of money from seminars. So you mean to tell me that we have a sport that people blow a lot of money on stuff, yep. and you want to be super tactical so that when we're all drafted to Taiwan that you can look cool in the live league video before it gets censored, yep. and you actually don't want to join the military that makes sense to me let's get real qualified individuals former military local SWAT team local law enforcement and have them teach classes on tactics and let's charge airsoft people money to do so I think that a fair majority of people would dish out let's just say sixty dollars to attend an event that you can learn real tactics so you can clear your house in your underwear when you hear a noise I very much understand that this is already a real thing with real steel but I think that there's other layers to this with airsoft you could offer cool I was here patches to add a level of individuality to it and this is an event that binds the two very well I mean we're talking about the sport where grown men dress up and play pretend with guns this is the perfect place for it I'm gonna double down on this by saying that you could turn certain airsoft fields into training facilities for local law enforcement or SWAT. I mean this in the sense that they could rent the field during the week for extra income for field improvements and etc. I know there's a lot of law enforcement programs that do special events with like kids that want to get into being a cop and I feel like an airsoft field would be a great place to just run scenarios or just be a space that kind of mimics a real environment with at least the claustrophobia aspect and everything like that. I mean, honestly, there's a number of things you could use an airsoft field for that doesn't necessarily have to be, you know, perfect tactical training. Obviously, I know not all of them are catered to, like, realistic events or areas, but I would definitely pay money to, to an event where I could verse, like, a real SWAT team. And, uh, I mean, tell me that wouldn't, like, A, help the community ties between, you know, the already frowned upon, like, law enforcement you know in some areas depending where you're at I know Florida backs them up I mean no hate and overall it would just be a really fun time for both parties really all right now we've gone over these three main points let's talk about some of the off points let's talk about fitness fitting this dick
I'm serious. I'm sure by now I've lost a lot of you in this yap sesh, but hear me out. We have fitness classes at our outdoor field during the week. I know a lot of you are like, what the fuck are you even talking about? But listen, you can easily add like an obstacle course or maybe even think of it like an adult jungle gym somewhere in the field. You could have pull-up bars, a running track, various walls to jump over. Just think of like a basic training course that any branch of the military would have and then add some dedicated areas for barbells and weighted vests and a squat rack. And now we're talking about combat fitness courses. Does it kind of make a bit more sense now? We have a large plot of land that is centered around LARPing with combat, but you know what's pretty quintessential to combat? Your ability to move. Um, dude, I, I don't actually need to run a mile because my combat knowledge from watching popular gun YouTubers <laughs> will help me out in real combat situations. Let's get some motivated veterans who are passionate about fitness and have them run people through these courses. Think of CrossFit meets combat training I know some of you are cringing at me saying CrossFit, but honestly, that's like the best thing I can tie the two together with. I feel like people would pay to do these things. Like a lot of people pay tons of money for fitness training in other capacities. But imagine you get to do combat training, but hold a fake gun the whole time. I mean, boom, I'm sold. So now that we have various streams of extra income on the field, Let's talk about some other small scale stuff. Most rental gear is pretty black. You get a basic M4, which most of the time is crap, and you get a basic mask. Let's charge people more money for different variety of gear levels. I know DV8 does this, big props to them. They have a badass selection of rental gear. And I just wanna say I glaze DV8 a lot, but I have no ties with them at all. I don't even really know anybody from that field, like staff wise, I've, I've never even talked to them. Yeah. Uh, anyway, but other than the money grab rentals offer, and the it's their first taste of it all, right? Shouldn't you offer them some levels of some nice stuff? I truly don't think it would cost that much more to maybe offer some basic plate carriers or chest rigs just to make people feel like a badass, right? Why do a lot of like people do this in the first place? They want to feel like they're in it, right? We want to LARP. That's the whole point of it all. So let's just give out a few more selections of AEGs. Uh, they don't have to be a ton of options. It can just be various levels just to keep the cost relatively low. If somebody wanted a sniper, offer a sniper for more money or shotguns or whatever. I've seen this a lot with paintball fields, but just not really at a lot of airsoft fields. It boggles my mind. So here's an insane idea. Crazy. Unheard of. You have little Timmy rental kids 12th birthday party at the field, right? Ready for this? Slap a GoPro in a case on his mask. Now Timmy can have a video of him shooting his friends and you could easily charge them more for this and it would totally sell. Do you know somebody who went skydiving? I remember when that was a craze. And the coolest part of it was watching like the worst quality video of them doing it. Wouldn't you want Timmy to have a video that he can show his friends of him sweeping and just destroying people or hiding in spawn the whole time? Do like a, ask him what his favorite song is, slap the song on it, edit some hit markers, do something basic like that. It doesn't need a ton of effects. And you could even include an editing like tune-up charge or something. I mean, who will do all this work? Let's use all these extra funds, not all of them, but you know, enough to balance it to pay refs and staff more money so that they can actually make a living. And uh, you know, I know owning several anchors isn't cheap or renting out a building for indoor isn't cheap either, but these ideas generate more income that can do other ideas, you know, build the sport up. That was the whole point of this video. What do you see in my review videos? You see staff sections because a staff makes or breaks a field. If you have refs that just stand around and don't pay attention, they don't enforce the rules. And if you don't enforce the rules, then no one really has a good time. And, and people don't want to come back to that field. I mean, you look at any airsoft freakout video, at least, you know, 50% of them has a staff member like freaking out or going over the, over the top. And, and that's the stuff that's just, you know, that, that makes or break a field. I don't know what else to say about it. I know, too, that like a lot of Airsoft staff, just from an outsider's perspective, they are getting overworked and, I guarantee you, underpaid. Let's pay them more and have other services for options for that, right? I mean, I swear to God, all these Airsoft fields have like the worst marketing I've ever seen. I mean, I understand that a lot of 
gun related stuff gets censored online but there's so many other things you could do and don't even blame I'm not even blaming the staff for these issues because it's not up to the staff to run a marketing run the store run the tech run the field like you're asking a lot but I'm saying is we get the proper funds for these things the marketing just totally needs to go up I want to go over the fields themselves now remember we're talking if I had the money to do all this stuff if you have a ton of space to work with and the business permits I think a hybrid field is a must the Florida climate absolutely sucks it's hot as hell a lot of people don't want to deal with the heat plain and simple outdoor is so much fun even though a lot of my videos are indoors I promise I have a lot more fun outdoors if you're gonna have a field and you have a lot of land to work with try to blend the two right I saw a field review video ages ago that had it was a field up north and it had massive like roof structures essentially barns without walls and they were big enough that you could literally have a ton of little structures in them for almost like an entire indoor field but they hybrided out even in the outdoors so now you have large shaded structures that you could play in that you don't even necessarily need AC just good air circulation because trust me poor air circulation makes playing inside with no AC miserable not the lack of AC I used to work in a warehouse that had massive fans that had just exhausted all the air out and it was super bearable I know some of the airsoft fields that just straight up close down if it rains I mean think about how much income you're losing if you're closing down on a weekend the weather is not gonna get any better in Florida so you're just gonna have to adapt to it right listen if you made it to the end i really appreciate it and hear me out a lot of these ideas can be argued for or against just throwing ideas out there that could turn into something great i invite you to call me an idiot in the comments or just let me know what you agree with i'd love to make more videos that are just like long commentary style like gameplay videos almost like uh cod you know the old school cod videos uh, it's pretty crazy that i'm saying that those are old school but uh, anyway thanks for watching